this week on Clown College. And um, these guys know there's a 20% chance that it's going to be Chris Hansen, and they're still willing to gamble it, dude. Still willing to do it, knowing 20% chance. It could, if there was a 20% chance that plane was crashing, would you get on that fucking Not even a not. chance. I don't not care even. if it was full of hot whores and rushing across the sun. Okay. No well, way. okay, now you put it there. Yeah, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> yeah, man. You put it like that, it maybe worth it. I mean, like. This is the Clown College Podcast. We're just a couple of open micers trying to make our way through the scene. Where we interview comedians throughout different stages of their comedy career, no matter if they're open micers, headliners, or traveling comedians. I'm here too, Jamie 2.0. I just talk a lot more. Damn it, Brandon. Go sit in the corner. We're having fun. Yeah. Episode 27. 27? I think. Nice, dude. What's that like? <laughs> Fucking 200 and dog years, man. <laughs> Roundabout. Hell yeah. I have no clue. What is dog years? Okay, seven years is like every seven years is something. So, no, okay, seven every times one two, year. Every one year. For a human uh, is seven years yes, for a dog. Yes, my bad. Yeah. Every one year is seven years for a dog. So okay, okay. It's, it sucks. It really does. Hey, you guys notice that uh, Brandon is clean shaven right now? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Sm- Be look at smooth. That. I'm, a, I'm a new man. I'm really smooth now. My face. So that's he, how we rolling. Yeah, he was playing a uh, pedophile hunter. Yeah, or, or uh, bait, 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 pedophile bait, bait, bait in the new. Uh, he's the chum. We were trying to trick him like a chameleon. Yeah. You know what I mean? He is experienced. <laughs> 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 when, when we thought of this kid, dude, who else could pull off that job? Nobody yeah, else, man. It was almost like he was born for that role, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Definitely that. raised for it. <laughs> you Got say him. candy, he says how high. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a candy lot in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm addicted to candy, man. <laughs> Top um, three candies, Brandon. Lee. Top three Ooh, candy, dude. Side Pass Kids, Reese's. And then if you go over there, you're going to get that Yolk Peppermint Mints patties. Mm, it's go weird over where? Yeah. <laughs> go over where again? Exactly. It's like you want to get a little spicy up oh, in there, okay. a little classy. What'd you say your first two were? <laughs> Sour Pass Kids and Reese's. Oh, God. m and good are terrible to me. <laughs> <laughs> I like mix them. Yeah. It's not mixed. <laughs> Ooh, no, no. Yeah. But he was like, York peppermint patties are a classy candy. The only people who I've ever seen eat York peppermint patties are people who look like their breath would stink and they didn't brush them that day. <laughs> and that's why they ate that, dude. That My and, family. <laughs> <laughs> and people trying to entice kids. Yeah. Ooh, that does make sense that you fall for it. crazy. That's cr- I, na- I named them naturally. I haven't even seen a York peppermint patty in the wild and. Years. Wow. I'm talking about decades. They won't be around forever. Right? Yeah, I haven't it's, seen them. I haven't seen one. They're in those little silver packages. Yeah, yeah I know what they are, but I'm just saying, I'm now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I haven't seen a York peppermint patty. I mean, we know. Or a Klondike bar. Yeah. No, I was they just thinking that. It. They got rid of the Choco Taco, man, a oh, few yeah. years back. Was that RP. Klondike, too? Yeah, yeah, I think okay. so. Man, look at that. Great. They get you up. I get you. And right first of up, all, right? dude, it's, it's called Klon Lesbian now. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> they switched up. So I'm fucking, definitely rose. <laughs> I was gonna call you a fascist, but that's not what it is. <laughs> that's, what the fuck? <laughs> what? what? Look at this right here. I look over get here. The- <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, the Hungarian Negro. What kind of shit? <laughs> I didn't know they had him over there. It's not even black. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> Memphis. Just the dude. It's just the dude. <laughs> it's just Memphis. It's Memphis. Also, <laughs> they probably spelled Wild Newport. name right there. <laughs> oh, good guess. Dude. Good guess. That what a wild selection. You said Reese's York in yeah. Uh, that is Sour Patch Sour Patch Kids. Kids. You ever had the cereal? Yeah, they got Sour Patch Kids cereal, man. That sounds terrible. Let me show you what dude. it looks like. In milk, man? Oh, yeah. yeah but dude. Brandon, stop, dude. Yeah, diabetes are coming, isn't it? Huh? Not, that's not even, that's like second concern. Yeah, You're eating but... sour milk, no, man? No, let me show you. So, look, see, this is it right here. Oh, should they got a Kit Kat here? That just looks that just terrible. Looks like sour Patch Kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. Gosh. God, that looks so bad. It's like fucking anal beads. Yeah, after your second bowl, you didn't really. Because it tastes Alex. like ass, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Then the peeps up there—that was the best one. That's still the best. Like, have you ever Pizza. see those? No peeps. Saying, peeps. Oh, oh my god! Not peeps. That I sounds. Peeps. So, if you ever see these, definitely go out there and get them. They're really good. Like I'm. Obsessed. Well, that kind of looks like Captain Crunch. It, I was gonna yeah, say marshmallow. Just like the Lucky Charms. Yeah. The... Yeah. 
Or these too. Like, that's, lucky a gen- that's a whistle. gender reveal party. Oh yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever's the last marshmallow determines the kid. I like that. <laughs> NBC will pick that up. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so what's all we got Jack here? Hell to if you is ever... that weed? I'm sorry. What? Is that oh, weed in the shit. top left in the yeah. shopping section? The Oregon it's flower. Sponsor. Stormy Daniels. Okay. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is going the, on? That's the strain of Stormy Daniels. Okay. I like that. Okay. Let's get some of that, dude. Tastes like piss. <laughs> Hold on. Why is that popping up? I guess it doesn't make sense. If you eat cereal, you probably <laughs> for Okay, so they predicted who I am because of this cereal. They're like, this fucking stoner. That's bullshit. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, dude. Oh, uh, I know this is your uh, podcast. Let's and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Now I said we got if you ever watch the pod and you wonder who does all that crazy intel, it's this guy right here. Our secret yeah. weapon. <laughs> got damn Jack Duck. Outside of one week. Yeah. Outside of what? <laughs> one week. Oh yeah, yeah. We had some oh, riveting man, stuff on that paper. Yeah. yeah was, all six of those bullet points, dude. <laughs> half well, of them were right. I want this to be known. I said, hey guys, we gotta tackle this as a team. Mm. You wanna know how many things JJ wrote down? Zero. How many things Brandon wrote down? You wrote down like three or four? Yeah, like three or four. Oh, you got three I or four. really dig. I was like, yeah, I couldn't you find them. It was okay. hard to find JJ shit. does look like he would be in the group and take all the credit. For sure. <laughs> That's what he did. First, first of and all. And then talk shit about the person who actually found there something. There were six bullets on the fucking thing. So if Brandon did four of them, that means you only wrote well, down two no, things. No, I didn't write down Brandon. I thought Brandon was going to ask him questions because he had the, the thing. But he never asked. I should have done that. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Yeah, I man, mean, you so. had them on your phone. I, I know. Like, I, like, I was yeah. like, blank. But we grow and we learn. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yes, we grow and we learn just like this Stormy Daniels right here. I prefer uh-huh. more of a conversational style. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like to explore my guests. Oh, oh man, I, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate Sex- that. Sexually. Okay. Ask David Lynham. <laughs> Who's our guest today? Hell yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Hell dude. yeah. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hold up. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Drama. Drama. Uh, you'll find out more about that later. Yes, you will. Oh, yeah, yeah. One thing that David Lynham told me once that he didn't talk about in his section of the podcast was um, he I, when we went down to do Ghost Train, he was telling a story about a dildo that they would put on the front of their tour bus. That was like two feet long. They called it the gut wrecker. Jesus. Or something oh, like that. Two feet. Yeah. Mm. And they would ride into town with the fucking gut buster on the front of the bus, dude. Solid. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. That's so how that's you get what attention. he's going to be like. <laughs> Just let everybody else know. Yeah. That's how you get that attention, man. You put it right there. People going to look. They're like, wow, that's a big one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just love when Brandon talks and they just stare at him. <laughs> uh, we were talking uh, earlier this week about, uh, have you ever been to a gay club? <laughs> Not one that advertised itself as a gay club, but one that was that like one? just yeah, a lot of gay people went to. Yeah. That's basically what Huntsville had like in the late 2010s. Hmm. Was there was, it was by the train tracks. There was a club that was just a regular club, but it was it became a well, gay club uh-huh. because that's who attended it. Okay, okay. Because uh, we were talking about it. I did, I, first time I went to a gay club. What? <laughs> and I went there. <laughs> you know, I, had to, I had to explain all of that yeah, for a reason say. because <laughs> cause I did go there a couple of times. <laughs> but it wasn't gay when I went there. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like... Uh, uh, back in the day, my brother would be like, hey, let's go. We lived, He lived in San Antonio. He was like, let's go to this gay bar. It's really fun. I was like, and this was back when I was homophobic. And so I was like, I'm not going. Mm. I'm not going. I'm not going to a fucking gay bar. Right. And first of all, if you guys are looking at me weird, everybody was in this time. It was fashionable. Still. Yeah. Yeah. From a small town and black people don't like gays. And that's all I was around. But now I'm not. So that's all that matters. But so, so then I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going to a gay bar couple months go by he's like all right let's go out we went out and i'm like dude this fucking place is fun as shit we're all out there uh we're I'm dancing and i'm talking to these uh like three chicks i'm like oh i'm doing good and then he comes up and he grabs me he's like i just want to tell you uh that this is a gay bar i don't think those were uh you handmade. know handmade chicks <laughs> and then and then so so then I, I like i like look around 
and it was like like you know when like your eyes like you take your sunglasses off and there was like rainbow stuff everywhere and literally right behind me there was a guy with his shirt off dancing aggressively on a pole <laughs> and i was like oh <laughs> but it was a it was a good time i ain't gonna lie they know how to party all right that's good we stayed there for the rest of the night had a great time it is a good thing. What, what, what happened on uh, your story, dude? <laughs> All right, dude. So when I was I was like 19, I went to Panama City Beach, and I went to this bar called the Splash Bar. I'm pretty sure it's still open. It's like, it, it is a gay bar. Like, everybody knows it's a gay bar. And I went there with my girlfriend at the time, and we had an awesome time. Like, there was this lady having her bridesmaid party. They were buying us drinks all night. We were partying. It was super fun. ton of people there. So the next year I go with all my dude friends and I'm like, guys, listen, we got to go to this place called the Splash Bar. It's a gay bar, but they were like you. They're homophobic after it wasn't fashionable anymore. (laughs) Shout out Blake and Josh. (laughs) (laughs) And Hunter, dude, (laughs) if you're still alive. (laughs) uh, Yeah, so I, I, I hype it up to them. They're like, dude, it is a gay bar, though. And I'm like, bro, trust me, tons of fun. We get there, and there's an outside portion. We pay 20 bucks each to get in. There's, like, maybe five people out there. Then we go inside, and there's maybe 10 people in there, and two of them are these two black dudes standing up on the bar, identical twins, completely butt-ass naked, shaking their dicks on the bar. And my friends, I don't think they've gotten over it yet. (laughs) We stayed for maybe five minutes, dude. Just long enough to get the pattern down. You know, and we left. That's so funny. I, I will say uh, Blake, Josh, Hunter, and JJ is definitely the first names of a 1990s boy band. Oh, yeah. I'd listen. Hunter's well, actually Mexican, dude. Oh, shit. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Hunter. Yeah. He's a Mexican. Yeah. That's a wild name for a white, name? white dad. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, my he, doesn't, he doesn't pass, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you looked it up, dude. Yeah, it was in Orange Beach? I guess it might be. I don't think that's it, man. Oh, damn. It was in Panama City. Panama City, all right, let's say Panama. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Panama. That That's it, the splash bar. Oh, shit. Fuck yeah, dude. Dude, look how many people were there. That looks like a good time. Let's go. Dude, it was awesome the first time. I guess I just went on a slow That dude has his shirt off, little right corner. That might be me, dude. I'm glad you had a good time. Three years ago, it lines up. There's multiple guys with their shirts off. Oh, wow. And I swear to God, when I was at at this bar. Well, I can't say it, but you see it. What? Jack sees it. Look in the middle, dude. Oh, see those titties? Bro, how could you not? Yeah. I like that. Is that a Spider-Man I didn't. Man costume too. I think I see Aladdin. Too, Shoot, too. But that one shoots webs out of his cock. <laughs> <laughs> or out of his ass, I guess. Well, if you're homophobic, go to a. <laughs> <laughs> Only when he farts, dude. That is ninety percent of our fan base. <laughs> but if you go, it'll make you not be homophobic anymore. They have a good time. Now I love all gay people. And, uh, le- <laughs> lesbians, I'm, I'm I'm friends with the most throughout my whole life. <laughs> yeah. Let me and lesbians get along, dude. Oh, I thought you meant like I'm friends with most of them. No, 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 no. Like, if usually if I come in contact with lesbian, we're always cool. We just get each other. Yeah, yeah. that's good. I don't know why. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> we're always cool, and they and usually like to drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> what else we talk about? about, guys? I'm going to tell you what we can talk about. What? We can talk about uh, how I, I got the news recently that sadly uh, the boxcar is gone now. Oh, oh dude. Man. All right, yeah, man. man. I'm really going to miss it. Well, I really wanted to come check it out. I got to check it out once, but now I was going to get ready to go more, and now it's gone. And, you know, hosting Black Panther Hidden Dragon. I'm definitely gonna miss that spot. Yeah, Damn. rest in peace, Boxcar Bar and Grill. Let's have a moment of silence. Yes, let's have a moment of silence. Brandon, if you would like to say a few words. Okay. We're gonna preach. We're did you gonna talk? Be. Did you talk to your moment of silence? Oh shit! Hold on, wait a minute. But you can't say that. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. You're not going to say any words, okay, man? Okay. Uh, <laughs> just a few. Just a few words. Uh, you know, thank you for all you have done. And we, we will miss you. And we love you. And uh, we're always here for you. And and all these nice guys in front of me, we're, we're all very sad. Look at their faces. Look how sad they look. And, uh, yeah, we're very sad. And uh, we're going to, yeah. Here's a little, here's, this is not for a joke. This is like, you know how you do a laugh and you get like a little, this is this is how what we used to hear in the bar. You know what I mean when you hear a good laugh. But instead of doo-doo, it was laughter. And uh, we're going to miss that. <laughs> it's beautiful, Brett. Thank you. Fucking beautiful. Do you beautiful. clap at a funeral? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eulogizing is in your future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, he can fucking do my funeral, man. Oh, yeah. You can do my wedding, too. I appreciate you. Oh, my God. That would be the best wedding of all time. That would be crazy. You <laughs> officiating the wedding? Oh, my gosh, man. Dude, I would be preparing, like, how many, two weeks? I would definitely, months <laughs> months in advance, man. I'd be I'd be writing pages and shit. I'd be, like, getting some research. I'd be asking you for help. I'd be like, we got to get some research on this guy. I got you. <laughs> Somebody you've known your entire life. I know, but I, I know, but I'd be, like, we gotta, we gotta get, I'd be like, we got to get deeper. We got to get deep, deep. I feel you. Okay, I don't like how I got lower with that, but well, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what we got going on this week? Mm. Mm, something big. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, dude, I'm about to get to the eighth gym on Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to defeat Claire's bitch ass dragon type Pokemon. Jesus Christ! Oh. You're like five hour. You're like five hundred hours in. How is that all your? <laughs> <hour? laughs> Dude, because I like to take my time. Okay, I like to talk to every person. I want to catch every Pokemon. I don't care if I have thirty five of this fucking Squirtle, dude. I need more. What's your starting lineup looking like? Oh, well, right now. Oh well, uh, we got an HM slave. Which, if you know Pokemon, you know what that means, dude. Uh, Corsi. That's our, all my HMs to get me to break the rock, surf, fly. For some reason, you can ride a fucking piece of coral into the sky in Pokemon, dude. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, for alligator, I named him Fang, dude. Got a crowbat, call him Wingdings. And then my uh, my golem, his name is Robert. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, and then uh, the pseudo wudo that they make you catch. Pseudo wudo? What is He's that? He's a tree. He's a tree that punches people. He likes to fight. He's a tree. So he's like Mike Tyson. An int? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. What you're uh, yeah, I was like, that about. was a different length. I got to get into this game. We Shit's tied, dude. Defeated Whitney's Mill Tank, notoriously yeah. the know hardest fight. About? Pokemon in early stage yeah, of a Pokemon sort of. game. I mean, I played it, but yeah, I don't remember yeah. these things. And he's yeah, he's like two generations past where we were. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Man. He's like Gen Z, <laughs> Gen Z Pokemon. Yeah. That well, it's <laughs> it's it's Johto. It's second region. It's a remake of an older game. The ones that came right out right yeah. after Red and Green. Hit up Jonathan Silver if you need a link. Oh yeah, dude. He airdropped me all the files, man. He's fucking got them. Whatever oh, you Jonathan want. Dude. Silver. I need them. Help me out. Shout out to Homegrown. They had uh JJ was on it. Uh, what? Nothing, it, dude. It did good. I sneezed. A JJ, Dan Price, Men, and Alex Z headline. It was a good show. Oh, yeah. I brought some friends out. They had a good time. I, I asked Dom's friend's brother if he ate pussy right in front of her, and she didn't like that very much. <laughs> did he? He did. He oh, said yeah. he, it was, yeah. he gave the right answer. I got the room to give him a round of applause, but yeah. that's not enough for some people, dude. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, white women can't fucking stand them. <laughs> I'm clipping this out and getting showing it to her. <laughs> I can't say her name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, they have families and such. Yeah. yeah. Happy Don't Mother's be Day. associated with this. Yeah. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Happy Fuck Mother's you. Day. Oh, yeah, it is Mother's Day. Yes, it yeah. is. Happy Mother's Day. How did we not bring that up, dude? Yeah. Shout out to all the good moms out there. Hell yeah. Thank Fuck you, Mom. you to all the bad ones that yeah. tell you to go suck a dick, but you probably already are. Damn, that is true. Huh? No, I get what he's well, saying, uh, man. Uh, uh, Cause the bad, like there could be some bad moms out there. Be like, hey, go suck a dick. Not every just, mom's not, a good not mom, every, dude. Yeah, yeah, but there's some bad ones out there actually doing what he's saying. But he's saying you probably already are, and you said that is true. Wait, probably already. Okay, hold on. Brandon's probably. mom. No, no, wait, wait. Probably already. Ah, probably already <laughs> are what? Uh, Sucking dick. 
Okay, no, 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 no. So what? I thought he was talking about the bad moms. That's so I saw that's what. Oh, that's okay, what okay. I thought. That's what you yeah, talking about. Yeah, probably. like in the bathroom. Or something. Mm-hmm. I was like, they might be. You never know. I don't know if my mom would be considered a good mom or a bad mom. She was okay. There's mid moms, yeah, dude. Mid moms. They're my mom overachieved. She was a 16 year old mom. Damn, raised damn, me. dude. Oh, Overachiever. Awesome, yeah. Fuck yeah. And now yeah. she's a doctor. No Not shit. Not like one of those that's doctors awesome. that makes money. But like, <laughs> doctor is a doctor, dude. Still a PhD. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Round of applause. Hold on. Let me get you. Jack's mom. Hell yeah. For her <laughs> accomplishments, not for her son. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Hell yeah. Hold on. To mothers. To mothers. To mothers. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Fucking Coors Light. That's what good mothers drink. <laughs> the least severe cases of fetal alcohol syndrome come from Coors Light. <laughs> With those mountains turning blue. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we got for today. That went oh. by fast. Well, that? What is big this week? There's some. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Guys. Friday. You really forgot? I thought you Friday. were fucking around. <laughs> what? You really forgot? No, I knew, but I wanted to do the Pokemon joke. I thought it was going to be funnier than it was. It went on for too long. And I apologize you're wrong. I liked that, it. dude. <laughs> I forgot I was surrounded by old people, dude. Except for me, man. I just got to get in. Yeah, it. but you have your own thing going on, dude. Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, all right. Being the fucking best, dude. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the live show, Killer Clown. <laughs> Killer we Clown. sold 12 tickets. <laughs> ah, 12 tickets. A lot of ads. 12 tickets. Yeah, Please dude. come out, guys. Please. If you're out there, we need you. It's going to be fun. We just We just shot the skit, and I will say... That's definitely yeah. our best. Uh, dude, this kid's actually really good. It's so yes, good. It Dan is. Price is the um, is the cop. Oh my god, kills it on phone him grave. On phone him grave. You know, I gotta put that in the. Uh, I gotta put that <laughs> the in the blooper there. reel. Yeah, yeah, the blooper reel. On phone him grave, and then uh, Brandon's the bait. Yeah, <laughs> where his dumb sidekicks. <laughs> and then went really just good. exactly as you thought it was, and we have a surprise pedophile. Yes, we do. Oh yeah, surprise yes, pedophile cast it. Yep. It's the ones you least suspect. Mm-hmm. Or you, most suspect. I was going to say, if you've seen them, probably most suspect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. This week's featured comedian. I told my wife I was coming up here to do four minutes tonight. She goes, make sure you do four minutes. Don't do 30 seconds and call it four minutes. <laughs> She's a bitch, you know? <laughs> People think four minutes isn't a long time, but you've never f***ed my wife, you know? Dude, this is cool. I like this setup. Like, this is, you got a switcher that switches all these. So I do it at post. In post. That's what we do. Every okay. camera's hot. Yeah. We go back and post. And they've got this software that grabs, it knows, who, when you start talking, it knows what camera to go to. So there's Ooh, really oh, not wow. much to clean up. So our, our producer wrote software that does that shit. Oh, crazy, shit. Dude. What the fuck? Y'all writing in it memorizes, <laughs> code? Yeah, it memorizes your voice and it knows it's like some AI thing and it memorizes your voice and as soon as you start talking it, it cuts to you. So he just I mean, unless somebody says something terrible, you know, he has yeah. to go back and take it out. Mm-hmm. Wow. We've, we we just we usually leave the terrible stuff in, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, we'll cut. Sure. It well, we don't yeah. have a career to lose, yeah, yet. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 this will it'll be real bad in about you know, being generous five years yeah. 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 when we have a thousand subscribers, <laughs> <laughs> almost there. Oh, we got three hundred or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a almost. lot of noise out there, dude. Oh yeah, <laughs> true, true. JJ, true. true. Yes, we got a special guest today, don't we? We do. We do, man. We're rolling. You're you aren't kidding, huh? Oh yeah, we're awesome. This, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> rolling, we get up man. in there, dude. Get up in there. <laughs> yeah, this is our third out of towner in a month yeah. after yeah. having none for 25 episodes. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this guy. He's one of the hardest working people in the Alabama comedy scene. He runs the comedy break in brand of show productions the mm. the sandbar in orange beach let's go ghost train velma's in trustville Dose. there's some other ones hack and <laughs> forth which is coming to shenanigans oh, august ooh. 24th that's right oh shit a, i can't wait for y'all to be a part of that dude. oh, oh so much you know fun. we're coming yeah, out yeah, anything you need we're coming y'all, out. y'all get it like part of that show is like when you have when you 
a lot of comics will go out there and bomb on purpose so they can we can come out of the gate and be like, man, we wanted to kill ourselves during your set because <laughs> yeah, like, oh. we're all buddies. And the crowd doesn't know that. They just think we hate each other. Yeah. It's what's so funny. They're like, oh, my God, that's what everybody was thinking. But we're like, man, we're it's like wrestling, you know. Mm-hmm. After the match, we all go out and get a beer afterwards. It's Hell it's a fun it. show. It's all for show. And dude. I got some good jokes that'll bomb hard. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. I've been building the catalog up on myself for nine, ten months. <laughs> That's when we got to cash in our agreement, dude. Do you remember the agreement we made about the jokes we're going to use? Yeah, I got you. We have Each of us have a joke that doesn't work. But like, not only does it not work, it turns the entire room. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it soils the It'll walk oh, people. Bad. So we said, we're going to do it on the same show. That'll be it. That'll yeah. be the show, That'll dude. It's it. so much fun. The, the reason I love this show is it makes makes comics better you see them every week at mike's they're just robotic and they tell their jokes and they don't ever go well and you're like what is this guy's real life like well we force them over the mic to open up and we see them it's not crowd work but it's kind of like them dipping their toes in it Mm -hmm. and you really get to see some of these guys really are funny but they're just not themselves on stage. They're yeah, like that, trying yeah, to true. be a comedian when they tell these jokes. They don't know about pausing or building tension and releasing. None of that. But you get a look at their real personality. And this show's like, it showcases it. And I don't care if it makes a dime. Like, I, it helps comics so much. Mm-hmm. And people make fun of it. Of course, first time people see it, they're like, oh, what is this? Kill phony? What is this? Dollar <laughs> store kill phony? But we only take one aspect of that show and do it. And even that, we change it. We don't spend 15 minutes talking to you. None of us have a career that's worth 15 minutes. No. About, you know? So it's no, like, not even what are bit. we going to unpack? And so we'll spend like two minutes and we move it along. And if somebody does good, we just move it along anyway so the next comic can ride that wave. Mm-hmm. You know? Hey, I love it. We're, we're doing like a similar, uh, we got a live show mm-hmm. on the 17th, and we're doing like half of it is uh, like pod. It's a live pod, and then we'll have some skits. And then after that, we, uh, we're we doing bucket pulls with uh, two minutes of stand-up and then uh, interview. And then they get the pies in the face because we're clowns. Yeah. That's great. You, there's no telling how many comics on this scene want to be on this podcast anyway. And they're, they're probably looking forward to it as an opportunity to be on the show. Yeah, and, it, and, and it'll be streamed. And, and we're going to use that for the episode. It'll be next episode. So we're going to use that for the episode and, and clean it up and have uh, the audio and all that shit really good. Who's the audio engineer for that? Well, Kim just has uh, a session shenanigans. Okay. So Kim has a uh, the mixer, and I just put the um, the SD card in there. You gotta have it. a crowd mic to pick up mm-hmm. laughter. Yeah. So so we'll have uh, Alex's mic has the boom mic I'll, I'll attached to it, the shotgun mic, mm-hmm. and we'll I'll, I'll I'll get back in between those and and get the crowd noise in there. Yeah. yeah. We're thinking about making a podcast out of it, but it's so hard to do because. Some comics are like, I don't want, you know, this is shit I'm working on, man. I take this serious. And I was like, yeah, but because I want to make a promo video. The problem is all of our back and forths with the comics, Mm -hmm. we reference their set. And if their set's not a part of it, then what we're saying is not as funny out of context. Okay. Because we reference something they said in the two minute mark in their set. And if you didn't hear their set, it's like, what are they even talking about? So, but we've talked to comics and they're like, if we get a good interaction and we have to release your set, we'll just ask them, hey, can we release this set as promo to get this show out there on the road? That way you might can have a gig on a Friday or Saturday when you don't have a gig. Yeah, know? and then whenever they release a set, people think it's like burning material. Well, really, it's not. No. You know, you're, you, the pe- you, it's, gonna, it's getting you, like you said, it's going to get you spots. And then, you know, you can do the same material. It's not like everybody in the room is going to know that one joke. And even if they do, people come to it. Like the machine, people still want to hear that ridiculous ass story. Uh, Over every time he closes with it, I'm like, who in this crowd has not (laughs) heard this damn story? But it's not about that. They love it and want to hear it. Mm -hmm. So if you have a killer joke in your set, there's just two ways of looking at it. And you're right, that is one of them. Is to you know, who cares at this stage? If somebody liked your joke, you should be really happy that anybody liked it. Exactly. Because I hate all my material. As soon as I get it down and it's tight and I like it, and I'm like. Oh man, why can't I write something that's not filthy? Why does yeah, everything have to be about cool jokes and dick same. jokes? Exactly. To, my wife's dad came to the show last night, and I was like, "Oh my god, half my set's about fucking his daughter." Like, <laughs> this is crazy, <laughs> and he's front row center, and I just couldn't deliver it the way I like to deliver it because he's up there. I can just see him shaking his head, like it was miserable. And I don't want to. I want to be flexible enough to mm-hmm. be able to do a clean set, like as a challenge. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to work it is on. A challenge. It is a challenge. It is. 
like you got to get like um observational comedy you know a little bit something like that to yes. to uh to but mix our in brains there. are programmed it's, to go towards our dick and that's what makes yeah. us laugh i know yeah. that's the problem man and you know what really made me want to do it is going and seeing nate bargazzi last night oh, i was yeah. like awesome. man look at it how effortless it is for him and look what he did he sold out a seven o'clock show eighteen thousand seats sold it out i went to the three o'clock show and i've been there countless times to see bill burr and people like that Mm -hmm. and he had almost half of the upper deck full filled so he almost sold out the the second show at 3 p.m do you know how much cheese that is guys a lot god almighty (laughs) i I bet you he's like you can have them dicks jokes son i'll be up here (laughs) Yeah, and everybody can go to his show and, yeah. and, and love it. Even if you do like dick jokes and all that shit, his shit's still funny. It it's is gold. Funny. It's gold material. His dad murdered too. His dad was, was up there? Yeah, the magician. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he brought his dad for this one. And um, he does very little magic. He's just funny walk around the stage. And, and really, it's mostly bits. His only magic trick he does is at the very end, and everybody claps for him. But he kills, man. His dad is great as a comic i don't think he's ever done it i think i think the biggest thing he's ever done is like a 15 20 minute set but he killed his dad was great damn it's wild dude i cannot imagine doing stand up with my dad that's for sure <laughs> oh i know we'd I be know. canceled immediately dude. <laughs> yeah. because how your dad is. he's yeah. wild as shit dude. No. he's wild Tell him how he sleeps <laughs> oh okay so my dad sleeps fully clothed and i'm not talking about like like pass out fully clothed <laughs> Like, Shoes on. like a soldier, dude. Like a fucking soldier. <laughs> right on his back. And when I say fully clothed, I mean he has like extra clothes on with a hat and sunglasses every night. That's why. Just like laying there. I don't ever know if he's asleep or not. <laughs> I can't tell. Is he just one of these? Where did this spawn from? Just wanting to be able to get up and go? Oh, dude. Be I at have, work? Like, yes. He's a workaholic, dude. That's, like, the, that's the sign of a workaholic. Sleeping yeah. in clothes. Gosh, dude. Just always ready, man. Yeah. What, what does Always he do when he wakes up every day? Uh, <laughs> he gets uh, he gets a ladder, gets on top of his house with a leaf blower. This is at like four four thirty in the morning. Blows all Stop the leaves it. off his Quit roof <laughs> every morning and every night before he goes to bed. Every single day. I love him. Is his yeah. neighbors like really concerned? Or are they <laughs> he's, just like... got a, he's got a bit of land, so I, there's some separation. But it's still insane. Is it the, is it the OCDness of wanting a clean roof? I think so. I oh, think yeah, so. it's got to be. You, so, <laughs> what, is J, what has JJ carried from that bloodstream? Well, I went to his graduation, right? He just graduated. He walks like a serial killer. Okay. He doesn't move his arms. He doesn't have facial expressions. He's. They might both be father and son serial killer. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, not going to be the guy that's like, yeah, me and my dad, we kill people, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you we got a neighbor think about you don't it. like? <laughs> slide, slide the ad you this way, dude. We'll take care of him. That's great, man. I'm, that's all it tells me is that you have to, uh, all of his weirdness, you have to have some of it. So I was like, what if your friends picked up on this? Like, you know, you're getting to be a lot like your dad and you'll get worse <laughs> at it as you get older. Oh, my gosh, dude. If I'm like that, shoot me, man. Oh, well, when he drives in the, the car. Roof. He doesn't listen to any music or anything. Okay. Silence. That, sometimes. I'll just drive. Like, I drove to Auburn a couple weeks ago, four hours there, didn't play anything. You hear that? Just sat there in the car. I was like that playing music. I'd do four hours and have, you know, in-ears on the whole time. When I got done with my shows, I would love silence. But it does. it is a sign of a serial killer <laughs> right? who, who doesn't play music and prefers the silence. Come on, man. Hey, who likes to be alone with their own thoughts? <laughs> I had the <laughs> shit so bad the other day, I, I left my phone in my room and ran to go shit, and I was alone with my thoughts for three minutes, dude. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I was screaming for somebody to throw a newspaper under the door or something. I'm just I was like in there stuck with my own thoughts. <laughs> Two hours to Auburn, just like, Damn. what were you doing, writing bits in your head? Or? I, I do go over my sets in my head. Like on the when I did the X5 showcase, which is Shout May, May 30th. Yeah, yeah. May third, yeah, yeah. Uh, when By I was way, on the guys, way down there, hey, just real quick, we are going to have an absolute huge, huge, huge comic this. at the end of the night, oh, and they won't even shit. tell me because they know my ass to get on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> and tell y'all. Hell yeah, they Hell had, yeah. they had, we had Jim Norton, and he had to bump to go do something else. <clears throat> now we got somebody bigger than Jim Norton that's gonna oh, uh, close shit. the show. Bigger than Jim, I'm gonna go down there. So like, hey, it's I'm free tickets. I'm listen to me. When I tell you this, it's free tickets. If you use promo code X5, go get them right now. You will be kicking yourself in the ass if you miss this, guys. At the Stardome, Birmingham. Mm, it's at the Stardome. And the uh, wings are good. 
<laughs> if you're fat. Um, well, I don't, I'm not bragging about their food, but I'll, 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 I'll tell you this is a big I took a 45-minute shit <laughs> after those wings, dude. Really? Yeah, normally I take an hour. <laughs> dude, I want to tell you about this. So we do research on uh, on the comedians when they come on, and uh, I went and listened to your song, Colt. Oh, yeah? Dude, I'm telling you guys, banger. The band name is Lionel. That's right. We were last in line when they were giving out band names. <laughs> <laughs> it's all they had left. Trust me, it's been misspelled. Hyman, Lyman. Every, oh, we we have a collection. Have that in the notes. Yeah. We have that in the notes, a collection of the misspelled band names. Yeah, which one do you like? We about? have a collection of posters of beer vendors and venues and pictures of like the whiskey go go in LA with our name just butchered. You can't even tell it's our name. I'm surprised we moved any tickets the way they spelled it up. That front. <laughs> we got Line M, Line Man, Lyman. Yeah. Line Num. I've heard all these, dude. I, <laughs> yeah. I, and I roll with them too. If you say it like that, I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> What's the sense of correcting? It's 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 spelled just like it sounds. Yeah. L Y N A M. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, trust me, if I could switch last names, I would have done it. But I don't. You may have to take this out and post. <laughs> but we're about to announce uh, the day before that shenanigans. We're doing a, a show at um, uh, Mars Music Hall that we haven't announced yet. So people right now only think we're doing this arena show in, in British Columbia, Canada, at this arena mm. out there in Kelowna. Oh, wow. Look, we so, got people on here doing arenas, motherfucker. Yeah, that's right. Not for comedy. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I could clear an arena if I did five minutes on top of that show. <laughs> But yeah, we got that. Uh, it's going to be August twenty third at Mars Music Hall, and we did this show last year and did twelve hundred tickets there. So damn. That, let me just say, what's funny about comedy, dude, is that um, one the camaraderie we all have. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have to know y'all super well that we could just sit around and talk for hours. I always enjoyed that being in a band, and when I quit. Uh, playing music to do the comedy full time which is a terrible idea if you're supporting a family out there if you're thinking about doing that don't do it but luckily i'm able to provide for my family doing other businesses so i and the podcast affords me the ability to do comedy and not need the money so uh the thing about comedy is so funny is nobody on this scene nobody gives a shit or even knows i was in a band and i love it that way i don't want to be treated like uh, like people treat me in the music industry, I'd love to go into it because I I know whether, whether I'm funny or not. People are brutally honest with me; mm -hmm. they don't give a oh, shit. Yeah. None of the we would outside of the Stardome, uh, a a Linum fan. This girl came up and she was like trembling, coming up to talk to me in front of the other comics. Now I'm sitting there talking to them, and she's like, "Oh my God, you are like my favorite drummer," and they. They don't know anything about this past life of mine, you know? Uh -huh. And they're looking at her like, this piece of shit that falls <laughs> regularly on mine? And you're like, a fan of his? And, she's, and they were like, what band did you play in? They'd start asking questions. Now they are all starting to know, it, like a year into my career in comedy. Um, and now, of course, whether they like the music or not. But they, they do realize that I came from, from something. And so many people come up to me in public now are like, why did you quit? doing something you were so successful at to do comedy. I was like, you've never gotten up in front of the people and told a joke and heard a roar. Yeah. yeah. Once you hear that, it's like heroin, man. You'll never quit. You never quit. It's It'll go. I mean, it's, oh, it's so addicting, man. And I like to think that I've killed before. I've never killed, by the way. I've just gotten nah, some pops. I've gotten some laughs, it. and that's all it took. I, I seen you. Uh, I loved that you had a um, – the first time I seen you was at Stand Up Live. And you did a smash mouth joke. Yeah. And, and you looked around, you were like, oh, so he just died. <laughs> right. Like, oh, oh, everybody hears a fucking smash Yeah, y'all love that song, you degenerate losers. Yeah. I can't believe y'all love that song. <laughs> I was laughing like a love one. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I met, I'm, the first time I ever met you was in, was at Cahaba in Birmingham. And I think that was like right after we both kind of first started. We started we around the same time. to be within like three or four weeks. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I started, started like July, around July 1st of last year. Oh, uh, yeah first uh show was uh during the pandemic june 6th hmm <laughs> oh, was that my first comedy show yeah your first comedy show huh june 6th uh, oh oh yeah i went up in an open mic um it was the first time i went up yeah it was okay. in oxford mississippi and uh we were playing a private event and they like y'all gotta be set up by seven o'clock we're doing an open mic here and everybody in the band goes Hey, you've been talking shit for a while. You want to get up and do it? I sat behind my drum kit and did my whole set. Oh, shit. And so this is how terrible it was. This is, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say this, but, uh, uh, you know, after I did a punchline I the, on the drum set, <laughs> I'm so mortified at it. But it did get a little bit of a pop, like, oh, that's not fair. We don't get to do that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. 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 yeah, it was one of those. Looking back, I'm mortified, but like I was. I was still comfortable doing it because I was behind the kit. The first time I got out in front of the kit and mm-hmm. was just out there, on, it was like I've never been on stage before in my life. I was shitting blood, dude. I was so nervous. It's a whole nother ball game. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Because you were talking about being alone with your thoughts earlier. Now you're alone with your thoughts in, a, in front yeah. of a room full of people waiting to hear them. That it's like a know. crazy... It's crazy to think about. When you suck as a band, you can kind of be like, it's a little him. It's a little him. Maybe a little me. It could be the singer. So mm-hmm. When well, you kind of share the guilt of a bad night. Not in this. Yeah. Not in this, buddy. Not There's in nobody that. else to blame. You can be like, that crowd sucked. No, buddy. <laughs> You'll see in about three comics from now <laughs> that, that <it> crowd's <laughs> just fine. <laughs> and they'll go up there and they'll fucking level the room. You'll be like, well, maybe it was me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I, my, my, my pit started sweating. Even... Like people would come up to me after my sets in the beginning and be like, "You you've been doing this for like five years. You seem so calm." And I was like, "Hell no! I can see these little tails I do where I'd be bouncing my leg up and down a bunch." Mm-hmm. And I, now in hindsight, I realize people will look at that and they won't even listen to your jokes. They're like, "What's going on? This guy got Parkinson's. What's going on with his leg?" And but at the time. I appeared to be calm, but I was having a nervous breakdown inside, dude. Yeah, when I saw you, you had to be only like maybe a month or two in at that mm-hmm. stand up i mean it couldn't be you couldn't have been doing it that long and i thought you were i thought you were that i thought you were experienced comic for a long I was time whip cream in a turd buddy. <laughs> in time, internally there was a dumpster fire going on in my body dude. in my head at least for sure yeah so Damn, where man. was your first open mic like starting in like the birmingham scene uh I, right before the pandemic hit i went up to one in um Crestwood, right in front of True Story Brewing, it's a place called Crestwood Tavern, and there, there were, it was, it was terrible. I mean, I can't, I've blocked it out of my head. You know, you're asking me about it, and uh, I'm bringing back memories. Yeah, I just, <laughs> it's what we do here. Yeah, yeah, I, this is like a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> Your uncle quit till y'all got me crying on this <laughs> <one> camera. <laughs> But that's the first one I remember. And then, you know, uh, what motivated me to start doing mics? Of course, everybody said, hey, listen, if you're going to do anything, you got to just start your own mic. Mm-hmm. I saw, um, I don't want to mention his name, but I saw a, a guy that runs a mic not let a comic finish a joke because it had to do with Hitler or something. And, and he was still in the building of the premise part of the joke. Mm-hmm. He, it was his very first time up. And he played him off and was like, not at my mic. You're not going to do any jokes about that. I'm and I fucked. was like, oh, no, 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 man. That guy, I, I went up to him. I was like, that's not right, dude. You didn't even finish the joke. My rule is and will forever be, if it's not funny, that's your punishment. It's mm-hmm. not funny. Yeah, that's true. And, and that stings enough, buddy. Mm-hmm. Those stay with you for years sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, it, and I was like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a mic that this feels like a show. I'm going to do a mic where everybody has walk-up music. And I'm going to uh, get a QR code. And, and like, if you like the comic, you can follow him. If you hate him, you can still follow him. See where he's at. Don't show up there. you know. Mm-hmm. I, and I tell people at mics now, following these comics is as good as tipping them. So just if you'll follow them, it, take, it costs nothing. Yeah, oh, Just sure. aim your camera at this TV and follow them. <clears throat> but then I just started getting obsessed with the production side of things. But uh, It takes away from your comedy, like writing. True. It, you, it does. Uh, That's the downfall of it that I'm now realizing. Mm-hmm. And now I'm trying to hand this thing off like a hot potato. <laughs> but it, in the beginning, there were two mics in Birmingham. That was it. For real. And then I just went on a rampage. And now there's one that. every day of the week except for Friday and Saturday. And I'm trying to add to that. I'm trying to put one at least on a Friday or Saturday. Even though it's an open mic, that's all hack and forth is. It's a spicy one. Like mm-hmm. it's, It feels like a show. The audience it makes them feel like a show. I want to make it an event. Um, so... But it does. It pulls so much time away from writing. And I'm terrible at just sitting in a room by myself trying to come up with bits. Oh, I, can't I have to be here. talking with y'all. And sometimes I'll be talking with my comedy friends, and I'll be like, I'll be right back. And I'll go put something in my phone. But that's the only way I come up with ideas. Now, I can go home once I have an idea and start. And then, yeah, write it, write it out. But I cannot just sit in a room with my thoughts and, like. Yeah, I, yeah. I need these guys that are like, they'll be like, write that down. You know, because sometimes you're just saying something that you're just talking about from your past or whatever, and they're like, that's funny. You need to write that down. You don't even think to. Yeah. yeah. Have we all forgotten more jokes than we remember? Oh, God, oh my gosh. If I don't write that down Ain't no way I'm sleeping on this one. Like, I will go to bed. <laughs> this is so funny. When I wake up, I'm, I'm going to write it down. Oh, you don't ever remember. I would be my career, man. I'd be doing arenas right now <laughs> if I remembered all the jokes I forgot, you know? Yeah. In, in a moment of. 
I had one the other day so good, and it haunts me to this day. I don't even know what it was. You know what it feels like? Uh, Tenacious D, the greatest song in the world, mm-hmm. where the, the the one they didn't write down, yeah. they forgot <laughs> it, and so they had to write one about it. That's what I feel like my whole act is now. It's just jokes about the one that I forgot. You know? <laughs> I cannot remember them. I'll tell you what sucks just as much is when you're really hyped about one, you got it written down, and you look at it the next day, and you're like, this fucking sucks. This <laughs> I do that on mushrooms. Yeah. Like, I feel like mushrooms really really does make me funnier and like a comedic. But sometimes, one out of ten times, I'll, I'll, the next day I wake up and I'll be like, are you like mentally disabled? Like, what is your problem? Thinking that would, there's no way to make that funny, you know. <laughs> you you go up on stage on mushrooms? Uh, no. Or you have? No, I, I want to. But oh, every okay. time I'm about to, I'm like, even out with laser, I was like, his crowd would be very receptive to somebody going up on mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Cashier was like, don't do it, don't do it. And I was like, God, he petrifies me. He's been doing comedy since Nam. So what am I gonna be like? No, man, <laughs> you don't know Cassio. better. Yeah. <laughs> You don't know better. I know better. I'll do, I'm still going to do it. I'll say something and get everybody canceled on the show. You know, I don't know. But I love I love mushrooms. Like I've, I, in a band touring for years, I drank more than anybody ever could. Mm-hmm. And so I just can't handle those hangovers at 47. Y'all are all young shits right here. Y'all can well, still do I'm, it and bounce back. I'm not that young. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting there. Are you the old man in the group? Because yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I am yeah. in my group. Yeah, I'm definitely They were like, hey, man, I, on our text thread yesterday, they were like, God dang, David, those were good seats. I was second row to uh, Nate Borgazzi in there. And another comic fired in. He has to be that close. He can't see or hear them if he's fucking five rows back, you know? So it's always old jokes. Yeah. All of my mentors in comedy are at least four years younger than me. <laughs> oh, that's great. At least. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the old man too, and and it doesn't make sense to start this career at 47. It's the crazy. but you like it. That's why it yeah. makes sense. Oh, I ain't ever quitting. Yeah, I, I th- that first time I got a pop at stand up live on Casio show, that five minute set I did opening up for him. Mm-hmm. I was like, I may never play drums again. That or I may, but I'll for sure be doing comedy till I die. Yeah. Speaking of, rest yeah. in peace. James Gregory just died. He was man. doing sets like two or three months ago. He was doing. My mom went to see him just a few months ago. Oh shit! And he died what, like two days ago? Oh, I didn't even know that. Rest in yeah. peace. Rest in peace. Y'all know who he is, right? I'm searching it up. James. James Gregory. Oh, the picture. It, he doesn't photograph well in his last few years. Of, oh. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. the funniest man in America. Oh. Yeah. Oh damn! damn he went it all the way till the end. It looks pretty rough in those pictures, huh? Yeah. I don't think you can Photoshop that. <laughs> but, but you know what? We can do this oh, shit till we die. That's what it tells you. Literally, just yeah. a couple months before he passed away, he's out doing Stardom show. Mm-hmm. You know? Hell yeah. That's dope. Yeah, dude. He had awesome. four million views on his newest special on YouTube. Damn. I hadn't even wow. watched it. What year is that? 2022. Oh, wow. Uh, 2022. I think so. I think that's what's I need going. to see that. My, it's my mom's favorite comic. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I text her when it when it hit my phone right in the middle of a show. She, my mom comes to all my shows. Oh, that's, that's nice. dope. That's awesome. All my open mics, she's at every single one of them, and I have like some material I want to do about her, but it's pretty disparaging. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and she, you know, what's so funny about these comics is they, uh, <laughs> y'all see them too. Like, there's just. <laughs> comics with like mental illness going on oh and, and yeah they, uh, sometimes you're scared you're like is this guy okay oh, hell, yeah. <laughs> i know i'm afraid to turn like there's a guy that just refuses to sign up for my mics but he shows up for all of them i am terrified to send him away because he just has that school shooter vibe yeah Ooh, and so i feel like uh yeah man we'll we'll squeeze you up um just when remember when you're reading your manifesto, remember your boy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just don't forget about me. <laughs> we were talking about a guy earlier from your scene, man, your neck of the woods. He talks about beating up his mom. Yes, on mm-hmm. stage, brags yes. about it, yeah. and looks my mom dead in the eyes while he says it. By the <laughs> oh, way, he, oh he does gosh. sets down here too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and the room tightens up. Oh, when yeah. you do that, you yeah. know, it's almost oh, like that's an insane thing to say. Like that's not even close to being funny. Yeah, it's not, that's. I feel like it could be. That's what's it, such a roller coaster ride about open mics because you're, you're like everybody needs to have a voice. Everybody needs to get up. But if you're got if you've got a show coming up two weeks from now and you're trying to iron out a tight five or ten, mm-hmm. if you if I put you up after that guy, there is nobody to do it to. You're back to just doing your set in front of us. Yeah. Which I, if I had a nickel for every time I've done my set in front of Just Comics, I'd have like fifteen dollars at least. Like, but yeah, you got and you have to, right? You have to to tighten that setup. Mm-hmm. 
And, and then, you have to acknowledge when somebody says something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I was hosting, and that guy did the joke about beating his mom, and I went back up, and I was like, yeah, whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> he was talking about beating <laughs> yeah. up his mom or something. <laughs> yeah. You have to, like, create that levity in the room because, like, it sucks all the energy out, and people are like, ooh, I don't want to laugh at anything now. I know. I have to – I'll go up and tell him. I was like, by the way, y'all. This is what happens when you don't pay for comedy. That's what I say when I go. I was like, it's free to get in, but let me look at y'all. It's ten dollars to get out of here, so you got to stick around. Don't let a guy like that drive you out of here. And and if he comes up to me, he's like, "Why'd you say that shit?" I'd be like, "Because you didn't." Now somebody has to acknowledge it because you didn't say, "Hey, I'm taking swings up here, that didn't go too well." Yeah. Like you didn't even. You were yeah. just like, "Yeah, that's my time," and get down. And like <laughs> everybody in here feels like dad just slapped mom at the dinner table, <laughs> and there's nobody going to acknowledge this uh, tension that's in the room. I've got to go up there and say something. Like, hey, man, that that's the kind of set that would make you want to quit. Am I right, gang? And everybody's like, "Yeah, <laughs> well, thank you for saying it. Thank you. We're all thinking it." And that's what's yeah. so funny about comedy. You have to say what the room's thinking sometimes to get a laugh. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you're hosting your own mic. Are you doing it by yourself? Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's a lot to do by yourself. I, I mean, mean, the one I do, it's kind of just like a like rough and tumble. It's loosey-goosey. Oh, it's a true workshop mic. Like, you can yeah, get up oh, there and, oh, like, yeah. just there's, an idea. There's and a get crowd. Up. There's always random people mm-hmm. there. And you got to win them over. T- yeah, you, you got to work. work they will look at They're you being like, ambushed by the mic. Is that what it? They they always have live music there, so there's always something yeah. on the stage. Yeah, but since it's always live music, they don't get comedy. Probably this is the only one. Yeah, so so yeah, yeah they kind of ambush. I do. Them. I have rooms offer me to do comedy, and I just go and look at them first. I'll go spend whatever night they're thinking about doing. I'll go look and look at the room and just check out the vibe of the room and be like, he wouldn't like it. She definitely wouldn't like it. He wouldn't like it. I just look, and that's the kind of patrons that are in there. Mm-hmm. If they don't have a side room that we can just have, and I don't care how small it is. The mic we run out in Montgomery, if y'all ever get a chance to go down to that yeah. one, it is so awesome. It's the tiniest. I swear it's not much bigger than this room. Is it um, um the Aviator Bar? Yeah, I've been there. I've been there before, Aviator it's Bar, yeah. awesome. It's down in that. When you, well, go, down you? Okay. The, go down the stairs, uh-huh. you know, you can go down and back up a little bit. That little room in the in the middle right there. Oh, okay. It yeah. is so tiny that – and here's what's cool about it. It has a perception as you're walking by that there's something big time going on because the comics give the people in the room – because there's only like 18 chairs that can you can sit in. They they line up in the hallway before they go up and, and they walk look in. Well, from down this way on the bar, it looks like, what is going on? Everybody's kind of looking in that room and people just file in. It's always packed and it's always like a little sardine. It's like a telephone booth. That's perfect. But though. the smaller you can get a room for, for open mics, the mm-hmm. better. And it, cause it doesn't take much to fill it up in the, and the ceilings really low. And it, it's like a bunker with sandbags all around you. It's such a cool setup. Don't, don't tell Jake that. Cause he, every time he goes in a room, no matter where we are, he's like, Oh, the ceilings are so low here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The ceilings. But it's, it's, it makes for a great room though, man. It really does. That's why Pleasures is so good, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a, we do it is that where the show. dildos are like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right You're doing comedy in front of dildos. <laughs> the the dildos box. <laughs> it's hard not to become a prop comic with that all around yeah. you, you know? I, I put stuff up there. Right? Course, yeah. <laughs> we had a dick extender this time. I didn't know they made those. It was a dick extender, 10 inches. So if you guys want that, it's at Pleasures. Good deal. Uh, it, you know, I 10% always have off movies. on like, Tuesdays. Like, this is just the overflow so it's not the stuff that's out there on the on the shelves. This is the overflow stuff. I just get, look through it and then put stuff up there. So comics, if they don't have nothing, they can just uh, riff on that. Yeah, yeah. riff on mm-hmm. that. That's great. Cassio said that mic's great. Yeah, did he came by recently and did it? At pleasures. If he, if he was there, I wasn't there. He he night. does uh, the cannon bar mic on Monday. Yeah, oh, we know why he goes to that one. <laughs> <laughs> he tells me that too. He's like, man, I'm gonna go up there and talk about the showcase, but really. I'm just going up there to get high. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I may not even do a set. He says he doesn't always do a set when he's up there. Oh, he said he said Shuli got up at one of the mics, and the comic, oh, the host, was like, "There's a guy coming up to the mic next. I've never heard of him. No, uh, but he's. I guess he's a new new comic. Uh, y'all make some noise for Shuli. I wonder who that. It wasn't me. It I had, wonder who it was. If it's that can, was it a cannon bar? I would have to assume so, but I don't know. If it was that cannon bar, it had to be Nico yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah, it was Nico, yeah. and Nico oh, said, uh, "There's a brand new comic, I guess, going up for the first time." And, and they had to go tell him afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> it's the guy that's done gigs with Dice Clay and so. Wow, like that. 
I was on the uh, stand up showcase and he was the headliner for us. Yeah. Yeah, he's cool as shit. I mean, just the coolest dude in the world. He's oh, funny. Yeah. I was like, you know, it's sure. So I'm like, hey, I mean, you want where you want to sit? Because I was just sitting down on the couch. He was like, man, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to eat these wings standing up on the um, yeah. on the microwave and, and we're cool. We had him on the pod. He's got two stories that he told on the pod that are uh, so great about opening up for Dice and how Dice will fuck with you. He'd be like, I want you to go out there. I'm doing a terrible dog. But he's like, I want you, how about you go out there and tell him about the walkout song I'm coming out to. It's my kid's band. And he's like, um, he goes, yeah, do it for three minutes, you know? And and he's like, I got 15 minutes of material I was going to do. He's like, eh, just talk about, go out there and ask them what they like hockey. Because it's in Canada, the show is. Uh-huh. And he's like, oh my God. So talk about asking what they like hockey and then tell them about the walkout song I'm coming out to. And he's like, oh, because he knows Dice's fans are like real quick to be like, get the fuck off this stage. Uh-huh. So he goes, uh, everybody here like hockey? And people are like, the f- they're already a turning on it. They can sense it just by asking that stupid girl. We're from Canada. Of course, we like fucking hockey. And then he goes into the bit about his, the the song he's going out to and the just the audience goes crazy. They're like, get the fuck up. <laughs> it's so funny, man. He's got so many good dice stories about dice. Don't give a fuck, man. Yeah, I, I love, love that his about him. shit on social media. He just goes up and just puts people through hell. I don't know if you've seen him. on. Oh Instagram. yeah. When he's like, uh, you want a picture with the, the, <laughs> the million dollar face? <laughs> People are like, who are you? <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I'm addicted to watching that stuff, man. He is so funny. He wears those the crazy dice, ass hot mm-hmm. hats. And those big ass glasses, but he's getting recognized a lot lately. And he's posting those too. But he, he'll just put something like "big fan," coming back, uh, coming back the dice man. Dude, Hell yeah! What a legend he is, man. How how was it? Oh, so the biggest person you open up for is that Uncle Laser? Or like like oh you went on that's the one you went on. Um, I like he Arkansas. took you to shows, right? Yeah, well he came by the pod and did the pod, and uh, right as we were wrapping up the pod, he was like, "What y'all do comedy?" And Cassio and I were like, "Yeah." And he was like, well, y'all want to open up for me in Mobile? And we were like, on the pod, I was like, don't you want to know if we're good or not? <laughs> like, you do this all the time. You got to get burned nine times out of ten just going, you do comedy? Come on down. <laughs> yeah, right. He goes, man, it's y'all's dick to eat. Y'all come on down. And we killed it down in Mobile that night. And he was like, y'all want to go to New Orleans? And I was like, hell, yeah, I guess we'll go to New Orleans. And we went to New Orleans and didn't have as good of a show, but it was the audience. There was only like 50 people there, but. Yeah, and it, we hit it off with him. We had so much fun when we would go out afterwards that, like, man, I'm telling you, like, being good at comedy is, of course, important. But if you're a good hang, you'll mm-hmm. get opportunities so much quicker than somebody that's an absolute nightmare to deal with off stage. Who are you telling me? Uh, we got a couple. Yes, we yeah. do. <laughs> I know. I know. There's comics on our scene that are tough to hang out with off mic, but man. on stage, they are killers. <laughs> And I was like, man, it's amazing the contrast, the difference. I enjoy you so much. And as soon as your foot gets off the stage, I'm like running from you. Like, a, like somebody rolled a grenade under the door, you know? But that's, that's, y'all, y'all are laughing because y'all know comics oh, like that. No. Yeah. There was a thing that happened recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a whole, yeah. it's, you preach it to the choir. Right oh, oh, and what are we doing? Hey, look, y'all got to live in this scene. Be careful what y'all say on this spot. Couldn't give less of a fuck. I'll <laughs> really? tell you that. <laughs> I'll tell he you that. He, he he come at me, bro. Oh, it's just man. like, it's, but I just don't like when people try to like bite the hand that feeds you. So you know, yeah. we came, we all came in. People were being nice enough to like invite us to shows, and they do that to a lot of people, even if they're not good yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And they'd be like, you you still need that experience to get on a show. And they put them on shows. They put them on pay gigs. And then if something happens that they don't like, it's a big deal. We're exposing people now, or trying to expose people. And people, and they're like, you can distance yourself from me. Fuck no, I'm not distancing myself from you. I'll go harder. Yeah. I'll go harder. because. And by the way, get out of the way. There's people. There's a line of people wanting that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, If you'll just get out of the way. Bye. Hey, next time, give me a one-minute notice that you don't want to be there because I can replace it in that quick. You know? Easy. Yeah. I'm the same way about it, man. I'm getting... I'm getting less because I'm not doing anybody any favors by walking on eggshells around them. When somebody has a terrible set, I'll reach out to them personally, and they'll hit me back like, I didn't think I had that bad of a set. Well, I'm just here to tell you, you definitely had a terrible set, Mm -hmm. and I want to pair you up with such and such. I think your comedy is out there, and it's not like anybody else's. It's terrible, but I think you would gravitate towards this person. So 
meet up with them and work, go over your premises because some people just get up there and talk about their fucking day. Yeah, oh, they start. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got into my cubicle this morning and and John, they think it's so crazy. And I was like, you, <laughs> you're not setting up anything. You're just ranting, hoping Where's somebody the punch? you hit yeah. something there. And uh, I'll try and pair. I really do want everybody to get better. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> there are lost causes out there. Yeah, in every market. And, oh yeah, yeah. And you you want to push them in the direction where they're going to be. They're probably good at something. They're, so, they're probably great at something. So the sooner you get them going in that direction, it's always a tragedy when somebody quits. I don't want anybody to quit, but there are some people that should really focus their attention towards other stuff. And there is a lot of stuff to be around comedy. Like we're talking about, if it would be the shit if we had somebody that knew funny who could edit the pod. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. yes. you don't want to trust Tight everybody. shots on people's yeah, faces. Because you know you want to get in there, you want to get the reaction when somebody says something and bounce it off, but you don't trust everybody with that. But it'd be so good because like you're saying, it takes away from your writing ability and what, when do you have time? You got a job, then you got to do this, you got to do that. I get it. Dude. And then... Uh, but like some people, and everybody's not. Most people are not going to make it in stand up. But you can always still do stand up. But then you can focus a little bit of time on. Oh, I, I could be good at this. I can be good at sound. I could be good at producing something. Yeah, I could be good on yeah. putting on shows. You know what I'm saying? You can make yeah. shit funny by editing it. You can mm-hmm. edit stuff oh, that God. wasn't funny, and you can insert a moment that wasn't even there. We do it all the time. One of the guys on our pod bombs all the time, <laughs> and we'll pause and do that kind of thing on Dukes of Hazard where they're like. Now this old boy right here, no, that you'll have the Dukes of Hazard thing crashing into a ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can insert stuff like that into a pod and make it really funny and like tight shots on the face mm-hmm. and pauses that aren't there. We have you know act like everybody's nodding off. Like after you get done with the episode, <laughs> hey man, there was a moment in there. It'd be funny if we did this. Can we just get a tight shot of y'all just like drifting off to sleep? That's badass. And go That's back good. and edit and do stuff like that. You gotta start doing that. <laughs> I like. That. Oh yeah, when somebody says something not funny, you're like, "Great episode, dude!" And then later they watch it and they're like, "Son of a bitch, they got me." <laughs> <laughs> um, you need people like that, though, man. Mm-hmm. Like because producing is a whole different skill set. Yeah. Doing stand-up. Yeah, I saw homeless pimp last night that uh, works for Hey Babe. And yeah. All that. yeah. Oh, the day damn. He, I, I look over. I, I got a picture of him, but he was right beside the stage. He works for Bar- Bargazzi full time. I oh, see man. why he started bo- b- backing off of uh, De Stefano's uh, uh, whatever his pot solo pot is. Yeah. Chris uh, Chaos. Chris of Chaos. And yeah. then he backed out of Hey Babe. I was like, oh. And I noticed he produced a special for a lot of comics and so i didn't know he backed off because chrissy came in hot uh chris DeSefano came in hot hot yeah. and then he kind of i don't even, his stuff doesn't even pop up on uh yeah. on my shit anymore i yeah. don't know why i didn't he's know funny, it, man. I didn't, yeah he's he fine I, don't, funny. I didn't know that homeless pimp uh left or, yeah he left he left his solo pie first and then he left hey babe which was his money maker and i was thought who is he working for and then i saw his name start popping up on like producing like uh, specials and he's out with Nate full time now you can I think he just yeah because I seen so he was he popped up on my Twitter homeless but that's crazy you just said that yeah. he literally just popped up on my Twitter and he was like shout out to this person gave me a shout out on stage he had to clip it probably was Nate Bergazzi yeah and then he was like it's so badass to work with him that's crazy yeah I, t- I, took, it up. I look over and I look right beside the stage I'm right there by the stage and he's taking a picture of the of Nate's dad and I took a picture of him and tagged him and then two minutes later I got a notification that uh, he shared it on his pro was that story. you then yeah oh, oh shit yeah. that's yeah. my father <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh you saw his share of it yeah oh, that's okay funny. yeah 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 yeah. and then I was like you're in a legend <laughs> man and he said thanks dude hell uh, yeah Yeah, that's crazy uh, some of the guests we've gotten on our pod I've literally just DM'd them uh, that's how I got Eric Griffin. We, oh wow, we, we were, were just, just we, we were just talking about Eric Griffin. We love Eric Griffin. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, but I know how to word shit. Like that's what he said. He yeah, goes, that's what I he get told a thousand of these emails a day. But I could tell you're an industry guy by the way you approached it. You didn't fanboy out. You were just like, hey man, see you're doing a gig. It's eighty miles from us. If you want to pop in and do a do a pod, and and it was all about how I worded it. But yeah, they popped right back. Same thing with Adam Ray. Now that price tag's a little steep. Yeah. I almost reply back, we'll take two of them, buddy. Seven and a nine o'clock. Let's get them going. 80 grand, we got it. But yeah, I, that's, you know, you'd be amazed at how sometimes they'll just reply. Now sometimes they won't. You know, we had Ari Shafir on the hook for the longest time, and then it, like two days before it fell apart. His, mm. his agent's fault. His okay. agent. His agent's pretty so greedy. Do you email the comic himself or herself yeah. or the agent? Okay, the comic. Uh, yeah. But uh, he. We could. I couldn't get him to. We even know Big J, and Big J's like, I'll get, I'll get Ari to come do it, and 
it's just like not pro- it's not a priority with them you know mm-hmm. Can you imagine like bringing up to your but if you're in the new york comedy scene being like there's this uh podcast in alabama you really should do you're not gonna spend any time hey, even if you're gonna about think it. about it for if a you second. even remember it once yeah that'd be all you say about it in passing if he's like eh, i don't know he's like well it's a fun podcast to do it's pretty cool i hung out with the guys all night they took me out and treated me really well and even that i mean it's a, it's a push and pull thing like when you're at this stage and you're trying to get followers mm-hmm. they don't need you you need them oh yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. when the tables turn and like joe rogan wants you to come do something well oh you're you up. need him like mm-hmm. <laughs> no matter who you are if you're you moving to, that moves tickets being on that show mm-hmm. and doing good or bad it still moves a bunch of tickets and um it's just a push and pull thing. You'll fight that forever. But like you said, it's comics out there who are just comic comics, and they're like, you know, these guys are trying to do something. Like you said, you like I, I listened whenever Eric was telling you, it was like the way you worded it, and just doing just doing that and going the extra mile. They might be like, you know, hey, yeah, I'll go on there. Yeah, and that's cool that you guys get you guys get big. You just had Chris Hansen watch the X Five podcast. Yeah, yeah. They had my boy X5. Chris Hansen on. This, there, we've though. had him on there three times. Now. <laughs> it, 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 I'm telling y'all right now, that's the most exhilarating thing to watch is them film they film it they film it right behind the studio we have, we have a house mm-hmm. and they do the stings out of there the the chatters they're called chatters they come in uh two days before and they start throwing bait out in the water and get to establishing and it's amazing how many people within minutes are just they have a hundred people on the line wanting to come over jeez and they'll do right. they, they have two scenarios they sell it's a mother pimping out her daughter okay and and just a daughter looking for money, but it's also it's all prostitution based bait. So they're okay. out there saying uh, one's a mother pretending to like solicit her daughter for sex. Yeah, and it is insane how many people get on the hook. So then Chris comes in on like a Friday or Saturday or Tuesday, and with, it depends on what he comes in on different days. But he comes in for two days, usually forty eight hours. And buddy, they just get them to pop over. And they're in Coleman, and they're in Aniana, and they're in Huntsville. Uh, one of the guys they got was a baggage carrier for uh, American Airlines in Huntsville Airport. Wow. Oh my oh, gosh. shit! That's I always what's... fly American, dude. <laughs> shit, <laughs> <laughs> fucking pedophile touched my shit. Yeah, man. I know. It touched <laughs> your... but man, listen. Uh, okay, so I ha- I'm there watching it. Of, co- of course, our podcast studio has these live feeds aim- aimed at the house, and inside the house they have cameras all set uh-huh. up, and we're in the studio lobby just watching it. That's crazy. And did we have Dave Williamson, uh, which is uh, uh, Bert's opener for the longest time? He was he came in just to uh, watch it, and dude, we're drinking and partying and having fun, and they got these people on the hook, and it's so exciting. They're like pulling in the driveway. I was like, oh my god. It's oh, happening that was, right um, here. It's happening right here. That's and, crazy. And, dude. and then some people run for it, which is crazy because let me tell you, there are at least like sixty sheriff and deputies behind a wall, just wishing you, <laughs> wishing you would run. They can't wait. <laughs> they ready to tackle they've been, that. They've app. been sitting there with pent up energy for days, waiting for this to happen. And buddy, some people run for it, and they maul them sons of bitches, dude. <laughs> they maul them. foaming at the mouth. Just get that two year old, dude. <laughs> They'll get it. They got uh, six in two days. The, the time I did it, I watched them. I, dude, they were about to catch somebody else, and I had tool tickets. I had tickets to go see Tool, wow. like $250 tickets. And oh, I was shit. like, I can't skip this, but God, I want to. I don't give a shit about Tool, dude. It's the most exhilarating thing to watch them bust these guys. Do, do, do people ever come there and then dip off? Like they feel, dude, they feel it's it out? crazy. Some people, uh, one of the guys they caught was a private investigator. That was his out. job. <laughs> so before, before they'll do this shit too. They'll tell the chatter they're 30 minutes away, but they're already there. And they're going in front of the house oh, and drive. Wow. That's why they got to clear it. As soon as they catch somebody, they got to turn it over and get them out of there because who knows if any of the other people are doing the same thing. But this guy drove by several times, said he was an hour or 30 minutes away, and, and kept looked at the property, looked online since he's a private investigator, looked up who owns the property, who owns the building next to it, all that kind of stuff, trying to gauge it. And her name, see if her name matched up as the same last name as the owner and all that kind of stuff. Mm, and he wow. still went and met him, still got busted. <laughs> but it's crazy, dude. Oh, it, it's dude. like these guys know, and it's all guys, by the way, never have they ever busted a girl doing it. I was like, well, y'all really? need to start looking Damn. at these high schools because that's where that shit's going down. <laughs> yeah, right? Every True. week. And they're hot True. teachers. We didn't yeah. have that I shit. I missed out. Yeah. Hell no. I'm doing a bit about this. My closer, but I'm telling you right now, <laughs> if that was an option in high school, I'd have been way better in school. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd <laughs> like, sign me up for extra tutors. I'll be there, son. I'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> but yeah, I, he said it's never once been a girl. And um, 
these guys know there's a 20% chance that it's going to be Chris Hansen, and they're still willing to gamble it, dude. Still willing to do it, knowing 20% chance. It could, if there was a 20% chance that plane was crashing, would you get on that fucking hill? Not even hill? a no. chance. I if it was full of hot whores and rushing across the sun. Okay. Okay. No well, way. okay, now you put it there. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> yeah, you put it like that, it is maybe worth it. I mean, like, I need to see how hot they are, honestly. <laughs> Damn. But I was, I, we asked him, we were like, dude, did, since you know there's so many out there, Aren't you like feel like you're not even you're just barely chipping away at a tiny little fraction of it? He's like, no, 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 it's it's rewarding, and we are deterring people from you, doing. He, it. he has to be deterring people. Every person yeah. they bust, it, it saves twenty five kids from being. Getting oh shit! They, yeah, it's yeah. roughly, it's not mm-hmm. exact science, but roughly twenty five kids get saved for every person they do it. Oh, okay, that's dope. Mm. It is dope, man, and he's going to continue to keep coming back and doing it. And I was like, you think there's some around here? He goes, it, it ain't about being around here. We can set this up anywhere in America. Anywhere. Anywhere. Downtown New York to, you know, Blunt County, Alabama. It doesn't yeah. matter. They will drive from Virginia to come down here. Wow. He goes, remember how desperate you were back in the day that you saw a hot girl you wanted to, t- you would drive states away to go meet her, right? And I was yeah. like, yeah. But she would, I would like, I preface it with, she was of age, though. Yeah. Let's get that clear before I get into this. But I feel like you're setting me up, Chris. But I, I was like, he's like, they're the same way. I mean, they're just like, it's just strange to them. They just have a mental, you know, they're mentally crazy. I was mm-hmm. watching your episode, one of them where he was on there, and one of the hosts was like, hey, it's good to see you, Chris. And I was like, damn, nobody's ever said that before. <laughs> oh, dude. They're, if they're you see rare. Chris, it's a bad day for you. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them, I mean, a lot of them know who he is, and they ask for They're like, oh, I love your show, man. You're really saving people. And he was like, but you're one of the people I'm saving people from. Like, it's crazy <laughs> to hear them give him accolades. They're deluded. They yeah, they're deluded in their uh, sickness. I mean, it has to be a sickness if you, like you said, if you're going twenty percent chance that it's going to be a sting, and you still do it, it has you have to be so fucked up. Guys say the craziest stuff to get out of it too. This last guy, he uh, right as they're about to shut off cameras and put him in the car, he's like, "Well, it's not like I could have sex anyway. I shot my dick off last year." Oh, and he was like. Man. <laughs> say that again now what did you say i was like yep that, i would have heard dollar bills going up and i was like we just sold some advertisement buddy that's a whole new episode now let's unpack this tell me about shooting your dick off and he goes through the whole thing with him about shooting his pecker off it's on true blue it's called they i guess uh the old network abc owned to catch a predator name. yeah so they have to so they have to call else. it takedown now with mm-hmm. chris hansen but it's the same show buddy it's you could put that thing on any network, and it, it C-SPAN that thing would take off, dude. It's it's so it's so awesome to watch. Yeah, because he does it right. I know it's my set, but like Chris Hansen baits them in, you know, makes them feel comfortable. Like the new ones on the internet, they just go too hard at them. You know, they're trying oh, yeah, to drag he them. He said out. there's copycats on the internet. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, there they're, are, but yeah. they're, they're not yeah. copycats because they're not doing it right. Like they just go, but oh, you're trying to meet a 14 year old girl. We're telling everybody it's a 14 year old girl. But like yeah. people want you to embarrass them by making them. Or we'll just see what they're thinking. Yeah, that's see, what Chris does. And then, yeah, you, you, <clears throat> you, you see everything that they're about, and then you bust them, you know, in a calm way. If you're just up there screaming at them, we don't get to know nothing about the, uh, the guy. That's true. I, I said, what if somebody's like, I plead the fifth. I don't want to talk. Yeah. Because you, you don't have an episode at that point. And he was like, no, we have an episode. We go through and re- they don't have to say shit to us. We uh, can just sit there and go through the transcripts of. So you told this girl you'd like the F and the B and like all this kind of stuff that they'll just read that out, which is way more embarrassing for that guy. Mm-hmm. True. He would probably rather just have you interview him and, and see what he was thinking when he came up there. Because they all try and back out of it. Man, one of the guys they called on this last one worked at a Toyota dealership in Birmingham and he left work to go do it. And uh, he looks, a dude, he looks like Kenny, Kenny Rogers before the surgery, but he looks like <laughs> Kenny Rogers, like a, just a nice, well to do old man with mm-hmm. nice car, nice car he pulled up in well, clean, well kept. And then what was he there to meet? Uh, a 15 year old girl. Girl. Man, okay. Man. And he's 70, which I asked him, I go, why is it the first question to these guys? Hey man, knowing how this thing kind of works, what makes you think a 15-year-old or any age woman would sleep with you like a struck match? You're like 800 years old, and you have that look of a pedophile. But not all of them have that look. Yeah, Some of them look very normal. One of them was the mayor, the old mayor of Aniana's son. Is that why? Because uh, did he get taken down? One of my friends was telling me this. I don't know how true it is, but that uh, he got taken off the network because he called somebody higher up. No. No, that's not it? No, no. Okay. I, don't, I, I didn't ask him that. That would be a great question. 
Maybe you should have interviewed me. <laughs> I was just in there dicking around with my own thoughts. So you're asking like power, or like hard hitting questions. That would have been good to know. Why aren't you on the network anymore? Well, he probably here's the deal. Honestly, he didn't own the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. He was an employee of Dateline at the mm-hmm. point. So now he owns part of True Blue, which okay. is the network he's negotiations owned. probably. And yeah, and just he makes more money running the yeah. show on his own. Uh, he probably had to take a big leap of faith doing it that way, but low, you know, high risk, high reward. Yeah, true. That's the kind of shit that goes with it. Hell yeah. So we got this out here. That means it's the end of the episode. Before we go, let's pull, let's pull up these pictures. Our Intel guy <laughs> our Intel guy gave us some pictures, and I just want to... Uh, oh, if this is a me in the band, uh, I'm really uh, never uh, going to uh, forgive you for this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can pull the frame real quick. Yeah, get that out. Uh, they got the line on panties. Yeah. Hell you yeah. know how long it took us for us to move those? We thought that was such a genius idea. We didn't know that every guy in the world would be like... So disgusted that they pulled down a girl's pants is like, Ugh, I don't, I don't if they've been here, I'll have. <laughs> yeah, and then there's more. Hold on, let me throw it down here. Oh, you got the bird. Oh, <laughs> I like how Jack put the bird. Oh my gosh, I don't dude. remember that picture at all. I'm telling you, I used to drink a lot. <laughs> Sound like me now? Yeah. <laughs> There's Birdie oh, Bird, Bert, dude. Birdie Bird Boy. Chrysler? Yeah, he was at the uh, Stardom, and um, that's where I met Dave Williamson that opened up for him. But, yeah, we just hung out at the bar. I was like, I know this dude. He'll be at this bar at some point. So just the whole room emptied out. Everybody left, and we just parked our ass at the bar. And I've hung out with him several times since then, though. He's cool, wow. cool. Hey, he has to be cool. Man. Oh, yeah. I met yeah, his he, daughter. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah his, his shows are kind of like pep rallies. They feel like yeah. to me, mm-hmm. they're not as much comedy shows as it's just. What you know? What's great about Bird and to talk me about this about comedy is that you can develop your own brand of it. You only need one percent of people to fuck with you, and and if you get that one percent, it doesn't matter if if a true comic like Dave Attell writes better jokes than you. It doesn't matter. He's yeah. filling up arenas, doing oh. talking about his family. So it gives me hope that like I may not be the best joke writer. I want to be, but mm-hmm. I may end up just being a storyteller, and that's kind of what he is. And there's a market for all of us. Hell you know? yeah. Sure. Like whenever I was I was on Kill Tony when he was on there. And then you know, of course I went looking through the comments, seeing what anybody said about me. <laughs> yeah. But the all of them were just trashing Burt and Whitney Cummins. They hated them. But like I went to a Burt show, sold out. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't care what all these people say. All these they they have hate um YouTube channels dedicated <laughs> to wow. Burt Kreischer. If I've and got they, those, dude, I've made it. <laughs> yeah, Y'all exactly. all kiss my dick. If I got a hate thing dedicated towards me, nobody that's doing something right don't have that going on. Exactly. Well, I actually just started one, so it's getting oh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting I'm trying ways. to get people to join in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great way of like, that's a yeah. back backwards way of doing it. That's great. So you know you're doing it right. Also, before we end the episode, I just yeah. want to say something about uh, Jack Douglas, our research guy. First of all, fuck you for misspelling my name oh, in this yeah, list. Yeah. Uh, he wrote down, you had a list of comedians you were dying to see live. That was yes. October 27, 2022. Tim Dillon, Chris Stefano, Shane Gillis, Santino, Bobby Lee, Mark Norman. And he wrote my name in here for some reason. And he misspelled it, and I know he misspelled it on purpose. <laughs> Because that's how Dom always says my name, dude. Uh, but he put me right in between Dave Chappelle and Big J, dude. Yeah. Oh, I'm just like Gerard Carmichael, dude. Yeah, I'm like Dave him. Chappelle. Who's y'all's list of people you haven't seen yet? Y'all want to see? I oh. know we need to wrap up. I'll talk to no, you. No, 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 no. We're, we're, we're good. We're yeah. good. Yeah. I was doing that for you. Yeah. Uh, but we can go. But uh, so mine is def. I seen. I seen. Uh, I saw Dave. Timmy D. By the way, I got to see him. You got to see Tim. De- yeah. Tim Dillon's one of mine. Bobby Lee is one of mine. Like yeah. I want to see him live because he doesn't have anything out. Let me tell you something. He's putting something out. Is he? And I've asked every comic, why is Bobby Lee so popular? And then he doesn't have one special out. They said he's been doing the same act forever. Mm-hmm. And every comic started to hold his feet to the fire, and now he's they're, they're He's finally gonna release. He's it. gonna release it, and it's forcing him to be uncomfortable and go out there and do it. And not kill. Because I, I heard whenever you see him, everybody says he murders. Yeah, it's razor shop shit. He's yeah. been working on for 20 years. <laughs> Probably <long>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all like iron sharp as iron. He hadn't taken it out there and put it online. So uh, One that's dead, but that's my boy, Norm MacDonald. I would always love to oh, see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. I just like dude, the, the way he, he would, would go do. meet everybody. When he bombed, he'd go stand at the front of the club and shake your hand. And when he killed, you couldn't find him anywhere. Dude, I love <laughs> that he would make eye contact with you after a big bomb and be like, thanks for coming. <laughs> that's bullshit. So, that dude. is, dude. That's baller Damn, shit. Dude. Who are you? Who is yours? Uh, I was, uh, Theo Vaughn, I was supposed to go see him, but oh, something yeah. happened that day. I had to refund my tickets. 
Uh, Shane Gillis. Yeah, he's on my oh, list. Yeah. I'd love to see Shane Gillis. Bobby Lee would be good. I've, I don't know anything about his stand-up like you, you guys were saying. And then probably... Shit, I, he's dead, but I would have loved to see Jerry Clower live because he was the first comedian I ever listened to. I don't know who that is. Clean comedian. He filmed a special in Clanton, Alabama called Peaches and Possums right next to the big peach statue. Dude, he was a clean comic, but he was so fucking funny, dude. No, oh, so shit. funny. When did he die? Oh, man, he was old, dude. That special came out in like 97, 98. He died shortly after. I think he died in like the early 2000s. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never heard of him before. Yeah, but he's like a southern dude. Just one of those guys that's naturally funny. What about you, Brad? Me, I would love to see currently right now either Joey Diaz. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's, oh, dude. Good one. I that's said such that. a good one. And dude. he's such a hard one to see, dude. He's like, he don't want to do He does it whenever he wants to. Yeah. Cut yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was like, I'm done. Didn't he say that at one point? He's like, I'm not doing stand up anymore. So. Is he on this fully loaded thing? Is he on any of those dates this summer? I don't know if he's on any of those. If they're doing if, one if, in New if Jersey. If he wants to, he's on it, though. You know, oh, it's yeah. one of those oh, things. Yeah. 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 Here, I asked Bert, like, I hadn't seen him doing much at all. And Bert's, uh, Bert told me this in private, probably shouldn't be saying it, but he's like, he gets a lot of advice from Joe Rogan. And he goes, the problem with Joe's advice sometimes is that it comes from 20,000 feet. Mm-hmm. He gives you advice from what he would do at his level, but Joey Diaz ain't Joe Rogan, so yeah, he can't yeah. like he can't. And he, you know, he I, he's been known to cancel a lot of shows last minute, like renegotiating uh, two weeks before the show, being like, yeah. "I want this," and they're like, "You already signed it for this. We're not we're not budging on that." And he's like, "I'm not coming." So I think he's had that happen with a handful of clubs across the country, and honestly, I don't think he's I don't really think he likes leaving Jersey. So yeah, oh yeah. He doesn't like he like he said he doesn't do anything on Sundays. He he needs to be back home on Sundays, and he he like does what he wants to do. He's right. at that age now. He knows you know. Yeah. He's just doing what he wants to do. But it, I would that's a great one. I would yeah. love to see who Joey else besides Joe. And then I mean he's dead of course, but Richard Pryor because that's something that my grandmother introduced me to. That's how I learned about comedy. Another live one. Hmm? A live one, another live one. I want to see today. Theo Vaughn, of course. Dude, okay. He's fucking hilarious yeah, yeah. and so random. Yeah, he's been I'm around like, here too. Y'all have had your opportunity. He, yeah, right. So yeah. Yeah. He, did, he did Montgomery a couple years ago. I wasn't gonna. I was gonna go to that one, but I never bought a ticket. But when he came to uh, the VBC, I was gonna go then. Yeah. Then had some shit go down that day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've done, I've seen too. Like, I did security for uh, Mike Epps one time. So I got to see that. God, live. he's one of my top five, dude. Mike <laughs> uh-huh. mm-hmm. Yes, dude. You know, never fade a feeling X rated? Oh, yeah. Dude, <laughs> I try to tell them it's one of it's it's top five for me in specials of all time. It's so silly. It's so fucking funny. Dude, he, I've seen him a bunch too. Him and Earthquake, I saw together. Oh, Earthquake. Dude, okay. when he would lay his school outfit on the night before. And just walk past him for it, be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, kill they ass in the morning. When yeah, I, put that yeah. <laughs> I used to do that shit too. I'd get that first day of school outfit out there and lay it on the bed. I'm like, ooh, they ain't ready for me when I come in that school. With that I would shit, love bro. to see a picture of your first day fit compared to Mike Epps. You know, <laughs> yeah. night and day, totally different. 180, 180. <laughs> yeah. Who do I have left now? What is it now? Because I've seen I, Shane Gillis is definitely one of them. And so you've uh, seen, you seen uh, Sam Triplett. Uh, no, um, Sam Talent. Oh, Talent. Oh, I did. I met him. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, but he got me for a T-shirt too. Son of a bitch. <laughs> um, who else is on that list? I Tom saw? Papa, Chris Rock. Oh, Tom. Ooh, Papa. Chris Rock. Tom Papa. I've seen Chris Rock. Wow, man. How'd you like How him? How was that? It was great. I saw him and Chappelle together. It was a miserable experience, but it wasn't them. It was just the arena full mm-hmm. of drunk people. Oh, Ooh. People, oh yeah. People screaming back at him after every joke and. Then passing out on my wife on her back. Oh, I was like, "You." That whole section was looking at her like, "Don't move. You got to take one for the team." Because he passed out against her back like this, and I was like, "Don't move. You wake this damn bear up." He, he the whole section hates him. Like, they're yeah, just, they're everybody's like giving her money. Like, Please don't move. Please let us enjoy this show that we spent so much money for. Damn, dude. Annie Letterman. Oh yeah, I love Annie. I, I like her too. I, I wouldn't expect uh, her to be on there, but I like her. Dude, my like new favorite Anna. is Catherine Blanford. You don't know who what, she is. Look her up because I know the name. Oh, she's gorgeous too. She's, she's really she, cute. Yeah, let me see. She, uh, she's from Blanford. Kentucky. She's With a, a K? Uh, yeah, Catherine okay. Blanford. Dude. She opened up for uh, Bert at the arena a couple weeks ago. She's uh, she just filmed a special in Austin. Lasers friends with her. Blanford. F O R D. Oh, Blanford. <laughs> Hold on. Catherine Blanford. Right there? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I never heard right there, right there that, yes. Okay, there we go. She's, yeah, she's awesome. She's she way looks, too she cute looks, to be a comic. She, looks, oh, she could be snap, on Fox News. That? Yeah, she really <laughs> does like one of their anchors, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, my God. <laughs> is that Rob Steiner? Yeah, Rob Steiner. Rob Steiner man. Right, she looks Fuck especially hot next guy. to Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Rob was like a struck match. Look at him. <laughs> Look like a younger picture. He was like somebody. He caught on fire. Somebody put it out with an axe. He was like a substitute teacher at Hogwarts. Look at him. <laughs> like animal from the Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, Catherine just dude. filmed a special in Austin with a big horse. She's from Louisville, Kentucky, I think. But she's a uh, she's great, and she's Look self-deprecating girl. in a way where she talks about like I'm too hot to be doing comedy. I look like I should be selling. Medi- like prescriptions to to people, you know, like yeah. a medical. I think sales. I heard that joke, dude. I think yeah, I saw a clip up. of that. Yeah, it pops up. She was on uh Jimmy Fallon recently. Oh, oh she did that bit on there. Yeah. What's Damn. her name again? Catherine Blaine. Okay, you, you already oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon has special needs. That's okay, man. <laughs> we all do. We all do. We're all undiagnosed and untreated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or self-diagnosed. That's what's so funny about comics lately. Like the asshole comics will be like. Hey man, I, I'm autistic, so you can't like. No, you're you're a dickhead, and you're using <laughs> yeah, that as yeah. an excuse to talk to me Damn. the way you're talking to me. And I know you're not autistic. We have them on the scene. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, it's sprinkled around on a lot of them. We Jake know what Muncy, you're, dude. Yeah, you can see oh, yeah, 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 but he's not an asshole. He's great. No, he, no, just no, talks, no, to me the good he just guy. talks to you like this. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> yeah, just no looks like this, and then he says the funniest thing you've ever heard. You got no autism. Comics use it way too much now, and there's definitely some on the scene, but they're they're not assholes like most. Of the autistic guys I know, like yeah. Jake, he's a killer, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake's a monster. I've got him on a show next, is it next week? Yeah, he told me you got him on like two. Two. I yeah, got two. him yeah. down yeah. in uh, Orange Beach, and then uh, 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 he's going to be doing it in front of a bunch of golfers on the 18th. <laughs> oh, so Jake at the beach, dude. Could you imagine that? <laughs> oh he's still going to have cargo pants and a, sh- uh, a long sleeve shirt with a button up over Those aren't it. That hair cargo is shorts, great, dude. dude. It's a mane. It's wild. It's it that <laughs> Amelia Earhart fucking air swept shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got it streamlined. Uh, y'all talking about nice, that a lot too. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, he so I thought he roast. was on this podcast too. I thought he. Oh yeah. He has on no. He, he's he's been on here, he, and we we have him on like uh, <laughs> doing skits and skits stuff. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. great, but it's just us three, and then Jack is our intel guy. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Jake, Jake's the band. He's going to be on. Uh, he's uh, doing one of our feature comedians on the uh, 17th. The Clown College. The Killer Clown. Killer yeah. Clown. I'm going to try and come yeah. up to that. That's you should, that'd be, man. That'd be badass if you came. That'd yeah. Put your name in the bucket, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be a good time. And we just fuck with you. That's fine. <laughs> and, I, and please. You know I can take it. Though. I didn't get into this <laughs> oh, yeah. with thin skin, man. This is my shit. I love it. I, I, I my, my Hack and Forth show, by the way, mm-hmm. I, I built it, made it all what it is, but I put the people that are best at what they do for that. They're all doing it. I got J Dubs from Montgomery doing production. I got John oh, McClernand, and we'll sub out a comic here and there for uh, for um, on the panel. You got to sign funny, up to get man. on there. Like uh, how do how do we get to, 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 to just to just, com- to just be one that goes up? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah you just sign up. Okay. There's a, there's a uh, I'll give you a link to put on this when you put it out. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a sign up if you go to Comedy Break In uh, Instagram handle uh oh, so in the that, bio that's what we're gonna do now so this then and first of all thank you so much for thank coming this was this was the shit this is great. so anything you got coming up we actually have it uh you can go ahead and hand it to him but anything you got coming up say it right there we'll have it on the side of you you know is this some kind of joke you know i can't read this shit <laughs> i got fucking glaucoma and you put it in the smallest font possible go ahead and read it off david yeah. <laughs> you think you're cute damn There's it some, jack being the, ableist the second ableist <laughs> second on the scene ableist. dude i guess the big thing to promote right now is to get tickets for that stardom show i can't stress this enough you will be kicking yourself in the ass and they're free they're free now if you let me tell you something if you there is like a three dollar charge for ticket fee or whatever if you email me about that goddamn ticket charge you can suck my dick dude it's a free (laughs) ticket you're gonna get hit with a two drink minimum when you go in there anyway it's free tickets we're giving it to you yes they may charge you two dollars or three dollars for a ticket fee but go to the stardom.com use promo code x5 get four up to four free tickets here's a little inside baseball you can get as many tickets you can use that promo code a hundred times if you've got that many friends <laughs> now i don't know many comics with one friend but outside <laughs> of this a lot of the comics down in birmingham i put them on shows thinking they'll bring four or five people not one person gives a squirt of piss about them <laughs> dude as a matter of fact i think comedy is their social circle oh, and yeah. they have no friends outside of that it's crazy so uh, if you want to go, it's free. Definitely go to stardome.com. It's April 30th. I mean, May 30th. 
Jesus. Uh, and it starts at 7.30. 10 comics. Winner gets $500. And then they compete at the end for $5,000 in August. So. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And, and they pick wild cards too. If you're a comic and you don't win and it was close between you and somebody else, they'll probably snatch you up because there's only five events. Mm-hmm. And so for the, six, for the finals, they need five more. So they're going to pull five wild cards. So, And I'm not in charge of picking them. I wish I was. They don't even ask me to vote on the final thing, which is crazy. <laughs> I'm just in charge of gathering everybody up and feeding it to Bruce and Cassio and all those guys. Hell yeah. And uh, at uh, David Lynam. I am David Lynam on David. all social media. I am David Lynam, L-Y-N-A-M, and I need followers. I got <laughs> All right. Thanks again, man. Dude, I had a blast. Really appreciate, appreciate this, me. dude. Hell.